Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about adding a morph head to your Freebone Actor in Crazy Talk Animator 3. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through the steps of creating a uh, morph head a little bit later on and uh, creating your own Freebone Actor complete with bones and pins and all that stuff. Uh, let's take a look at this preview project first just to kind of get a hang of what we're talking about here. Uh, you can go to your project tab and there's this project of this uh, beautiful lady in the painting here and you can play back and you'll see that uh, here's a little preview here. What are you saying? Are you serious? She'll give us some this sassy talk too here. Much. And uh, so let's take a look at the, let's deconstruct this character on the screen right now by selecting her and going into the composer mode. Let's take a look at what she's made of. And you can see it's a simple uh, one level of uh, bone, a simple free bone actor, uh, basically a spine that's going throughout the body. And you can see there's little dots on the bottom, these red dots, those are actual pins. And those pin the dress into place so they don't, they don't, so the dress doesn't move around with the character's uh, head. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, later on. Okay, you can, uh, select any of these, uh, whoops, let's go ahead into preview mode first here. You, can, you know, preview, you can move her around, give her a sassy, uh uh, kind of <laughs> look with her head there. Alright, okay, so let's, uh, go back into, uh, stage mode here and let's start our own Freebone actor. So I'm gonna go to a new project here. And over here we can create G3 Freebone actor. And I have this cute little dog image prepared. And with this dog image, what we're going to do first is add a bone hierarchy. You can see add bone is automatically highlighted. And when you click on the dog, you'll start to add bones. Okay, so I'm going to add a bone uh, directly at the base here uh, to start off. And then we're going to add another bone uh, node here at the stomach area. And then one more at the uh, chest area right here. And then after the chest area, uh, the next one you need to place is kind of where the, the neck meets the head, the back of the head here. So a little bit higher than the snout, I would imagine it would probably be about here. All right, so let's place it right there. And then finally one marker in the exact center of our character's head, just right here. And then we'll right click to end off and we have a simple bone structure. We can preview it and you can see there's our dog. If we move that top bone around, the only problem here is that the paws are not staying on the ground, and that's what we want. So in this case, we need to do some pinning, uh, which you saw earlier in the previous example. So let's go ahead and just select Add Pin. Now before we do this, we need to make sure that we're in the root, okay? Uh, the, the reason for that is because the bones will move around, uh, and we don't want to place the pins on the any of the bone layers, okay? We want to place it on the root, all right? So the root will remain stationary regardless of where the bones move. Um, so that's where you want to put all your pins. Okay, so we're going to select the root, select add pin, and I'm going to place pins on the paws so they remain grounded, and we'll place a couple on the tail as well there, just like that. And then we can go ahead and preview this one more time. And this time, our legs remain relatively stationary on the ground there. Okay, we have our dog just kind of swaying around, do, 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 okay, and paws on the ground. Good boy. All right, so. Uh, we've got our bone structure and our pins taken care of. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a separate layer for our head because we're going to create a morph-based head now. Okay, so I'm going to close down the bone editor. I'm going to go to the layer manager here. And this bone four, that is the uh, head here, this is the one that we're, this is the layer that we want to place our head on. Okay, we want to create our head on. Now, in order to do that, we need to create a duplicate duplicate layer for the actual head itself. Okay, so I'm going to select the bone four and duplicate that layer. Okay, and it'll ask us to add a mask. And what we want to do is we want to mask out the dog's body. Okay, so with bone four layer selected, I'm going to keep that as the head layer. Okay, so I want to mask out everything on the body. Okay, so we'll use our brush here. Let's just uh, mask out the entire body, just like this. Okay, and I have a nice uh, soft edge for my uh, head here for the fur. We were getting a little bit too close in there, but uh, let's try and do a crash job here. All right, maybe you can, uh, if you get a little bit too wild, you can use the eraser to erase uh, the masked area. All right, we'll just work with that. All right, so we've masked out the body, and what we want to do now is go to the root layer right here. And once we do that, once we select the root layer, you'll see the bone four layer, the head layer, will just have the head. Okay, so the body has been masked out. Awesome, so that's what we want. Now for the root layer, we want to mask out the head. But we do want to keep a kind of a rounded neck area for the head to rotate on. Okay, so we're going to do something like this. Get a nice rounded top there. Mask out the ears and everything for sure. Uh, but we want to make sure we have a nice kind of 
imaginary sort of neck area. Now you can Photoshop the uh, snout and everything out if you want. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that because we're not going to really see it. Um, you'd only see it in extreme rotation examples. Um, but this is kind of what you want to do here. Create a nice rounded area like that uh, for the head to rotate on. Okay, and once we're done that, we can go ahead and close down the mask editor. And now we have our completed dog. So let's go ahead and preview and select that head. And you can see it looks okay, but uh, whoops, we have the head going way off track here. It's not even connected to the body. So the reason for this is because we don't have the body bound to the head on the bones. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and get a preview out here, and I'll show you how to fix that. So make sure you have your uh, head layer selected, the bone four layer, and you want to click this little doodad over here uh, that says bind when you, when you mouse over it, and that's going to double bind the head to the body. Okay, and you can see the, uh, the node there becomes red to indicate the double binding, and then when we preview, we can select our head, and do -ba -do -ba -do, suddenly we have a good rotation of the head are a good uh, result where our puppy dog can just you know move around freely and not have its head pop off of its body okay cool so that's the double binding so we've done all the pins we've done all the bone creation and the double binding that we need to do we have created the separate layer the last thing we want to do is create the morph based head okay so for this bone four layer what i'm going to do is select it and then go over here to convert it to a morph based head. So we're going to convert this entire layer to a morph based head. And this is all just, this will take you through the uh, facial fitting process here. First of all, we're going to crop this uh, little cute dog's head out here. It looks all lonely with all that white space. All right, let's crop it out and select apply. And we can scroll our mouse button to zoom in there. Looking good, looking cute. All right, and go to the next step. And here's where you want to put your uh, initial markers at the uh, outsides of the eye. Just follow the reference image on the left there and on the outsides of the mouth here the cute little guy all right and go to the next step and in the next step it's going to ask you to put your uh, markers for your all, all your facial features so let's just do a quick job of this here place them where we think they should be okay and you want to make sure that the uh, blue outline uh, kind of uh, conforms relatively to the outside or the eyelids rather the outside of the eyeballs. Let's make the eyebrows a little bit smaller. Although the uh, dog doesn't really have many, any eyebrows to speak of. We'll just kind of place them right here. All right. His whole face is fur. Of course he doesn't have eyebrows. And let's just take the nose and the face should be okay. Now because this is a masked image, we don't really have to be too picky with the uh, the facial uh, shape and everything like that. We can just kind of move it to somewhere, you know, relatively close. If you had a background here, you'd want you'd want to make this uh, very specific, but because it's a masked image, you know we don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, and then we want to go to the next step, uh, detail facial mode up here, and with that selected, we'll do some more detailed stuff around the eyes here. Uh, make sure they're nice and rounded. These round, cute little puppy dog eyes. All right, just like this. Okay, I think that's good. And on this side, we'll place it a little bit further in, around the mouth a little bit. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, and the nose should be in the middle. I believe we can maybe move down a little bit just like this. All right, and that's uh, pretty much good to go. All right, we just need to worry about the eyes and the mouth, really. Okay, so let's go to the next step. And it's going to ask us to uh, uh, set our facial orientation. Okay, and you can see we can move it around if it's if the image is side facing, but it's face, facing the front. So let's go ahead and use the long snout profile here. And you can see this is suitable for a lot of wildlife that has snouts like this dog. Maybe not wildlife, domesticated animals or what have you. Okay, and just go ahead and press OK. It's facing straight forward. And now we've created our morph based head. Ta-da! And you'll see the layer manager in just a moment here. We'll actually switch from bone for layer and it'll switch to our talking head. All right, so there we go. And you can see all the layers here. We don't need to really need to worry about all this stuff, but now we have a separate talking head on our character. Let's go ahead and preview this. So let's go back into stage mode. And in stage mode, I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna zoom in on our cute little, cute little guy here. And I'm going to go into the uh, facial puppet editor. All right, you can also use the control U hotkey. And from here, you can choose any of these profiles really. So you can choose any of the, the, the human profiles, I guess you would call them. 
you can see our dog you can blink by clicking your mouse button you can move around you're a really cute little look, looking guy all right and opening the mouth all right and there's also special uh puppy uh dog profiles here you can select the dog and you know use these as well okay so you can have them like bark rah, rah, rah. okay and uh move around blink the eyes um, all sorts of fun different uh, profiles you, you can work around with um, on your own time. You can also go over here and refresh this or clear the selection rather and you can pop in individual parts at a time. So if you want to select the chin, you can open his mouth just like this. You can have, have him barking like that. You can combine that with uh, you know, eyebrows and uh, uh, the mouth maybe. Having like angry bark or something like that. Okay, well, that's really all there is for the, for the facial puppet and everything like that. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you that. Now, if you want, you can also add uh, morph-based features onto your character as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that right off the bat here. Um, so let's go over to the uh, composer mode again. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just a, you know an option for you if you want. Uh, so we're going to go to the content manager here, and under head, we have a morph eye section and a morph mouth section. Okay, in the morph eye section, there's like cartoon, anime, and animals. And you can apply any of these eyes to your dog and it'll replace the current eyes that it has. And, uh, you know, for example, select these dog eyes. Now those will look a little bit weird. And the reason for that is because we need to resize them a little bit. I like to actually use the walrus eyes on this dog because I think it suits him uh, quite well. So you can select these walrus eyes and they're quite small. You know, if you want to, uh, um, make them a little bit larger, you can go over here to the eye settings. All right. And we want to give them like really big, uh, big pupils, cute puppy dog eyes. So let's just make sure we have eyeball iris selected up here and we can scale it up to like uh, 175, press enter. And there you can see now we have those cute little uh, puppy dog eyes and we can preview those. And here you go. All right. That's the result you get. Okay. So really cute looking. Um, you can use these instead of the, uh, the normal eyes if you want. You can modify these in all sorts of various ways as well. Let's get a preview mode here. You can import your own diffuse maps and everything like that as well. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use these ones right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, close this down. And stop previewing here. Stop the face previewing, rather. And you can also do the mouth, all right? So under head, we have the morph mouth, all right? You can give him, like, uh, human teeth if you want. I'm going to go ahead and give him braces if you want. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the... There's a beast teeth, okay? Not the bloody ones. He doesn't really... It's not, doesn't look like a vicious dog at all. So let's go ahead and use the uh, Beast A teeth right here. Okay, you can see cute little uh, puppy dog teeth right there. All right, so now we have our uh, custom teeth and our custom eyes. And we can now go back into uh, stage mode again here and uh, preview. Give them a little preview again. And now you'll see the difference with the eyes. Okay, so now we have, we have the eyes look around like this. Okay, cute little guy. And uh, have him has his happy expression okay blinking the eyes and uh have all sorts of fun with that okay you have a bark rawr, rawr, rawr. all right if you don't want to, don't want the eyes to move you can deselect the eyes and just there you go have him bark okay let's go ahead and as one final touch here let's just give him a quick script uh give him something to say um we can go ahead and use the uh, text to speech if you want it to sound like a robot or we can use my voice you go to create script, you can use record your own voice, text to speech, or WAV file. Let's just, uh, you know, go ahead and use my voice. So I'll go ahead and record voice. And once I record. Hey everyone, welcome to Crazy Talk Animator 3. Press stop. You can uh, play it back if you want. I'm not going to worry about that. Hey everyone, welcome to Crazy Talk Animator 3. Okay, cool. And then we can, uh, you know, uh, layer on some puppeting on top of that. Give him the... Uh, Oh, not that one. Uh, it's a little bit extreme. Maybe the happy one right here. Okay, and go ahead and just press record. Make sure we're at frame one again. Press record. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Crazy Talk Animator 3. Okay, and press space, and then we can uh, play back. And here we go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Crazy Talk Animator 3. Okay, cool. All right, so that's really all there is to creating your own morph-based head for a freebone actor. Um, just uh, create the bone structure, uh, separate it onto two layers, mask out the uh, the body and the head separately, and then you can uh, do your face fitting 
uh, on your cute little puppy dog, or maybe you have a snake, or maybe whatever you have. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, but thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot. Make sure you check out our other Crazy Talk Animator 3 videos on our YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.